note that have changed about yourself mentally, physically, or spiritually, and which change do you feel is the most profound and meaningful? Well, I make a better pizza now than I used to. I don't know if <laughs> that has uh, anything to do. I, I don't think that Nekong is something that uh, is geared towards society as a whole. And, and, and there I'm recanting uh, previous statements that I've made in my books. I think it's, it's always been a monastic tradition. It's something that, because what it is, Nekong is basically enhancing power. So there again, if you have to work for a living or if you're involved in society on a daily basis uh, and you, you have uh, the ups and downs of life, then it's very difficult to, to practice uh, this sort of thing. It's better to just go away and, and be alone. And that's something to be quite fair that, that Pak John uh, told me from the very beginning that I didn't grasp and I thought that it was something that could be used uh, in general in society as a whole, which is why I wrote the book. Um, I believe that, that uh, Nekong is like taking steroids. I mean, it can go either way. It can go very bad. It can go very good for a small amount of time. Uh, you have to be very, very careful with it. You have to be careful not to abuse it, and you have to be careful how you use it. I mean, it's very similar to the uh, Tumo practice that's done in Tibetan yoga, where if you look at the statistics of the people that actually start out and how many have negative effects and how many uh, actually qualify to, to be able to do the yogas, uh, only a very small percentage does. So in that context, uh, I will not answer your question regarding my own self, uh, because I believe it's a very personal thing for everyone. But I hope that I've answered your question as regards to Nekong. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Free Spirit. Um, next question is from Plain. Costas, do you know of any martial arts coming from ancient India or the Vedic texts? It seems like uh, mental weapons may have been part of their arsenal, at least if one reads some of the Vedas. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I, I've also read that. Uh, in fact, the, the Brahmins uh, supposedly defeated the Kshatriyas by... Uh, engaged in higher energies of the mind, and, and that might be a battle between uh, Nekong and uh, some other practice that has more to do with mind than, than with uh, the more gross energies of the body. Um, there are martial arts that are Indian in origin that historically have been documented. Uh, we know the Buddha practiced martial arts. We know, we have reference to a martial art called Vajramushti, circa the, the 12th century AD, and then uh, the last 200 years or so, we have reference of somebody uh, of an art called uh, Kalaripayat, uh, and I'm sure that, that you've heard this before. Um, if one could say that there is a historic martial art that's been associated with, with Buddhism that we can prove a reference in that context, then... Uh, I will have to say I don't know, but I've also read the Vedas and been fascinated by that description of uh, of the warriors getting their ass kicked by the, by the priests. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Green Meadow, you got a question for Costas. Thank you. It's wonderful listening to your voice. You have a wonderful resonance. Oh, um, really? Yes, actually. My question is actually somewhat about the Schumann Resonance. There's been some speculation that the Schumann Resonance, which is a subsonic energy wave that exists between the Earth and the top of the atmosphere, is actually a combination of yin energy from the Earth and yang energy from the Sun. When you work with yin and yang energy in your body, is it solely in your body, or do you draw from the outside energy as well? No, no, we draw energy from the outside. It's not from within our body. Okay something that exists in the world uh, and there is a clear distinction between the two in fact uh, when you're doing meditation correctly uh, what you'll see is a and you're sitting on let's say a, a clay floor or something that's porous you'll see a wet spot underneath your body where it appears that, that something has been drawn in and that moisture is actually condensing and it's cold it's not 
it's not warm. Uh, for me, I've seen it soak into clay tile and look like a spot and, and stay there for you know half an hour before it evaporates. So uh, it's definitely something coming from the ground and something coming from the air. Wow. There have been some experiments where they actually cut people off from either the yin or the yang portion of the Schumann resonance, mm -hmm. and this caused uh, illness or physical weakness. When the first astronauts left the planet and its yin energy, they were unable to walk when they returned, and now they have machines in the shuttles to duplicate the yin portion of the Schumann resonance, and that fixed the problem. Do you think that people can cut themselves off from their own yin or yang centers? And if they do, what symptoms do you see? I think there are practices of assassination that use just that. Uh, at least that's what I've been told, that, that there are psychic attacks that, whose intention is to cut off uh, the supply of one energy or the other to, uh, to people. Uh, so. In the context of uh, esotericism, uh, they're definitely there. In the context of Western physics, um, I would say that there's a whole lot we don't know. I mean, uh, as I indicated in, in, uh, in my books, we're becoming more and more accepting of Eastern notions uh, as each decade goes by. At the same time, we are also understanding esoteric concepts more as our science progresses. For example, uh, when I was studying Nacon at that time, we didn't know there was an enderic nervous system, which would have explained so many things that we were feeling, uh, because basically what you're doing is you're programming a separate self, and lo and behold, all of a sudden you have a, a nervous structure that can accept this, that, that it's actually more powerful than our spine, and, and this was unknown at the time. At the same time, if you look at the uh, what's become accepted now in astrophysics that was not accepted 20 years ago, it's simply astounding. I mean, we've, we've seen that the speed of gravity, it's been proven rather that the speed of gravity is equal to the speed of light. Uh, we've pretty much accepted that uh, the expansive force uh, of solar energy is what's keeping the universe from collapsing, but we don't know what it is. We've understood, we've understood more and more that cells have memory. Uh, if you read Roger Penrose's stuff and you start looking at macrotubules within the, the cell, you know, it just becomes uh, amazing. So my ambition is, if, or, or my hope rather than my ambition is, if we survive the next 20 years, and that's a big if as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm one of the people who believe that societal collapse might be just right around the corner if we're not careful, and, and I hope it doesn't happen, but if we survive the next 20 years, then we will truly enter an age that will be wonderful, and, and I hope I'm there to see it, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally along the line of, can we have breakdown so we can have breakthrough? Um, but I have a follow-up question about the yin and yang. Sure. In men and women, are the yin and yang centers different, or are they the same? I don't know. Along the straight line, uh, along the center line of the body, they're the same. Uh, I was told that they're reversed in men and women, but I'm not a woman, so I can't answer that question in, in, uh, in fairness. I can only tell you what, uh, what I've been told. Thank you. You're welcome. Costas, um, are you familiar with Jet Li, Jackie Chan, and Donnie Yen and their form of martial arts? Um, the reason I ask is I've seen Jackie Chan hold an egg in his palm and then break six concrete slabs with the same hand and not break the egg. Is he using yang energy only, do you think? Um, or do you think um, any of them um, might be familiar or with, um, say, yin energy and its uses as well? Well, I don't think... I, I think, again, that uh, the separation and the distinction that, that we make between the two is incorrect. And, and I also uh, believe that Quantifying it and classifying practices like this is, is incorrect. It's remarkable that Jackie Chan can do that. Uh, I've, I've seen it done by other people as well. Um, but you, you have to understand, our desire for, for classification and, and uh, if you will, layering of these principles is it's a very 
latent European phenomenon that, that really took place after the 15th, 16th century. I mean, look at music. Notes didn't used to exist. I mean, uh, people would would uh, play based on free resonance. And then, uh, who was it? Was it Bach, I think, that, that actually came up with a formalized system and, and created the scale, do, re, mi, etc. Uh, before that, and, and the reason he did that was so that it would be easier for orchestras to, to play together because as new and new uh, methods of playing music and, and instruments were created, then it became more complex for these large orchestras that they were using um, to be able to, uh, to coordinate themselves. But still in the East, for example, if you, if you listen to Indian music or, or Arabian music or even classical Greek music, there are no notes. I mean, there are what we call as uh, roads. Uh, in Arabic, it's makam. It just means uh, a path or, or... Anyway, uh, this classification and segregation and, and trying to, not mathematically, because math is actually a very liberal and free language, but uh, to model these processes might be incorrect. So my opinion is that, yes... Jackie is probably using yin chi, and I guess he doesn't even know it, and he doesn't care either. I've been privileged to be the student of uh, other men that I consider great masters of uh, Chinese martial arts, and the deliberation and the segregation of the concepts that, that I put in uh, Mangas of Java, which was strictly based on uh, my learning that from Park Chan at the time and my understanding at the time, uh, might not be correct. I mean, I don't think that, that they view things so separately and segregated, let me put it that way. They're just using energy, and they're using their mind to control it. Could you tell us, maybe in a broad sense for non-practicing Nikung people, how do you use that energy, um, maybe broadly? Could you share it with us or tell us how it's to a layman person? In what context? In terms of, obviously, people that have read Magus of Java have seen how the use of energy can be used. For example, um, I believe you told a story of John Chang going to California and then after a challenge he accepted, he put two coins in his hands and then when he closed them and opened them, the coins had you know, been squashed together. So in terms of the use of that energy, how would somebody conceptualize how would that actually do that and how would energy flow that would come flow through the palms anything like that I see uh, you mean uh, as far as the, the process by which it's done correct well in the Magus of Java I, I put in photos of burn marks that, that appeared in the center of the palm and, and along the pericardium meridian uh, which, uh, what, which happened when I was uh, fully training so you could actually see at that point uh, energy bubbling out of the center of the palm and, and running up to the, uh, the fingers. Uh, that is the process. Uh, how you use it, I guess it's up to you. You know what I mean? While you're training, it's, uh, it's a very personal thing. If you embrace the theological, uh, I mean, the, the Indonesian Chinese do it because they believe the theological concepts that are uh, propagated by the school, that if you do this, then your spirit will survive and you will retain your intellect, etc., etc., etc. Um, 